we have been talking a lot about gym in our office, in our content, in the store. We've had a couple of gym events that have been really fun. We had our first cocktail hour where we had a special guest. Our customs department has a lot of really cool stuff that we are excited to show, so stay tuned for that. I know, including one of your own, which is cool. I think yeah. that people, seeing that it's not that hard to do a custom and to have something that is super unique in yeah. your own, I love it. We've been talking a lot about sort of like the history of really cool gemstones, which I think has been really fun. We had Navit from Ome Prefe come with amazing gemstones. You guys should go back and check out some of our content on our Instagram. You get a little sneak preview of some of the pieces or some of the uh, gemstones that were here. Probably one of the most famous... Dang it. Dang. Every time. Every time in the crown jewels. It's been mislabeled for a really long time. It's called the Black Prince Ruby. Oh, well it's because the name is so cool. Yeah. But it's not a ruby. <laughs> It's not a ruby. It's not a ruby. It's a fraud. It's a fraud. <laughs> so fake. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually a spinel. Well, we do know that like technology, they weren't able to tell them apart no. for a certain period of time. Yes. And so it was a red gem yep. and it was beautiful. And yep. so they called it a ruby. I feel like now you can't call it the Black Prince spinel. No, it doesn't have the same ring to it. You know, then doing a little bit of research into sort of like the crown jewels. They've had like a few official jewelers. The jeweler who made the royal crown with the Black Prince Ruby it was Gerard and Company. They're no longer like an official jeweler of the crown, but they were, they're still associated with them because well, they made the crown. Could you imagine being like the official jeweler or one of them for the crown? I know because some of the <laughs> gems they have, yeah. I mean, they're, they're passed down, right? Yes. So yeah. I think they will like take a gem that's really amazing and uh -huh. they might, the next line might do something different with it. Mm -hmm. And so whoever is setting those gems, how scary. Yeah. Cool, but like scary yeah. because oh, you yeah. do not want to break <laughs> or chip because some gems are really fragile. Yes. And even if they're not yes. one of the more fragile gems, when you're setting them, like anything can happen. It's a, it's a little something that I think maybe people don't realize no. that jewelers might be sweating like as they're yep. trying to yep. set these amazing pieces. So it'd be so cool to be one of the jewelers and also the pressure. One that at least just makes me smile. Um, is the fact that the House of Aspire made a maple leaf brooch that's just decked out in diamonds. Mm. I'd wear it, but I think it's very cool. I love the brooches. Cause you know, it's like there's not as many options, I feel like generally that are worn by men, but men or women, a brooch, you put it on your blazer, your suit jacket, whatever it is, and automatically you have something that is like personalized and just different. I think they're classy and cool. Our designer and our jewelers in-house did a, is it a moonstone or is it turquoise? I can't remember now, but we'll insert a picture, but our gemologist now wears it as a brooch. We had a pair of earrings and a pendant, super fun, really, really cool. Um, but yeah, every once in a while we'll catch Kathy wearing her, her brooch. We want to see more brooches. Yes. We want you brooches. <laughs> What inspires you in, in making a brooch? So for me personally, like I was saying, I just, I wear a lot of like little crop jackets and blazers. And so I love the idea of taking such a classic piece and then being able to personalize it. We've outed our designers for our customs. Now they need to yeah, speed yeah. it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if anything, the custom process should take a while for good reason. Doing things like setting stones, you have to be very careful and it takes patience and skill. And fortunately, you know, our, our jewelers have that, but yeah, could you imagine? <laughs> you break a stone, I'm like, that's it. It's so hard to find goldsmiths like ours. Like you, yeah. it takes a long time to find them and to train them. It's yeah. almost, it's almost like a dying art. Mm -hmm. they're, they're hard to come by. Mm -hmm. So we love our goldsmiths and our jewelers. Another thing that has been, I guess, inspiring me or things that I've been noticing in the jewelry world, um, two main things come to mind that I see trending. And I don't want to say trending as in like, it's something brand new, right? Like we were talking about with brooches. A lot of these things come back around, which I love because when you invest in jewelry, you wanna be able to wear it for a long time. So something that I'm really seeing is still that trend towards more of a substantial piece. Um, has a lot of presence. Chunky is another word you could call it. <laughs> I don't love that word, but it's true. Yeah. They're chunkier pieces. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing this a lot in especially earrings, whether it be yes. hoops or studs, yes. even like almost like a door knocker style, like on uh -huh. your studs, super, uh -huh. super cool. Yep. With your hair half up, I mean, that's, it's classy. 
It's so classy. I'm also seeing it a lot in cuffs and rings. So those are like the three main categories I'm seeing it in. Still seeing a lot of yellow gold, but we've been seeing white gold or white metals coming back. I would say who I see this done the best on, and I'll try to insert some pictures here, is Hailey Bieber. Yep. She wears this style great with her hairs up down whenever you're seeing like the chunky hoops, the chunky chains, the chunky rings that are layered, her big oval. Another person, kind of a style icon, is Rosie Huntington Whiteley. Her style is impeccable. And you'll see her also wearing that kind of big chunky styles, stacking up those cuffs and those bangles and the rings, mixing metals, but definitely the white metals. Yeah. I'm seeing that more and more. I'm wanting to kind of play around more with that in what we have at the store in our selection. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do it in silver. Cool. I think that's a great way to, if you're like me and you're wearing a lot of the yellow fashion jewelry, like the yellow gold. That would be me. <laughs> yes, we love it. We, we'll always love yellow. Yeah. But I think if you're wanting to kind of transition and try out those white metals, Silver is a cost-effective way to do that. Mm -hmm. Of course you can do white gold, but a lot of these pieces look great in silver and the price point is gonna be awesome. So we have a few pieces now that fit this trend really well. Some of my favorites are by Lika Behar. She does kind of that sculptural, um, substantial look in a lot of her rings. Um, we just got some new ones in, they're like dome-shaped rings. Also her cuffs, she does like the mixed metals. You stack those up, you're gonna get that look. Yep. And she does the fusion ones as well. So where you'll have a thick gold strip on the outside and it's silver on the inside, that keeps the cost lower, but you're still getting that great gold look, the yellow, if that's what you're looking for. Gabriel & Co. also has some great pieces. Some of like the chunky, huggy hoops. It's trending, but that style is, it's classic. Bottega Veneta came yeah. out with the, the really big, uh, the famous, the famous teardrop. teardrop. But yeah, we have a few that are reminiscent in that. I think I'm enjoying hoop styles yeah. that are still inspired by the Bottega Absolutely. teardrop. In all different sizes, yeah. so you don't have to get like the massive, no. <laughs> the massive style. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would definitely wear those, but yeah. all of these trends, they can be very wearable yes. and classic and timeless. So we have some great styles in the store already, but I'm definitely on the hunt for some more of these pieces. So people should stay tuned because I always share these things as we get them. What do you guys want to see? What do you need to have in the store? <laughs>